What's going on guys? Hope everyone is doing well. I had some time on my hands, so I figured I would do a video on the Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K. I got the version two in the bag right here in the case, but it would be the same for version one or version three. So I'm gonna walk you through the Autel Explorer app and kind of point out some of the things that I would immediately change while flying. And I think that will actually point out some of the things in the app that I think will help you out when flying and really kind of get you started on the right foot and prevent some frustration while flying this drone. They're doing some tree trimming down there with the chipper, so I'm hoping you can't hear that, but it's kind of distracting. So in the case right here, we have, lo and behold, an Evo 2 Pro 6K version two. And the first thing that we're gonna do is make sure that the firmware is all updated. So the best way to do that with this drone is to go to Autel's website, download the actual bin file, the latest firmware, and put it onto your computer, and then put a micro SD card, which is gonna be the little guy in here, the little tiny SD card. So when you download the firmware off the website, you're gonna get a folder that's gonna go into your hard drive on your computer. You're gonna take the actual files and extract them and put those on the root directory of the little micro SD card. Then you're gonna put that guy back into your drone. You're gonna power on your remote, and then you're gonna power on the drone. Obviously make sure you have the gimbal guard removed. They say to remove the props, you don't necessarily need to. And then it will prompt the update, and it should manually update without an issue as opposed to doing it over the air through the actual app. So a lot of times it will prompt you inside the app and it actually will fail and not go through. So my suggestion is just to go ahead and go to the website, download the firmware, extract those files out of the folder, put it on the root directory, the micro SD card, put it in the drone and do it all manually. But that's step number one. Step number two is going to be basically getting ready to fly and getting familiar with the Autel Explorer app, which is the app that we use to fly these drones. The light series and the nano series uses a sky app. I'll do another tutorial on that soon when I get my light plus back in my hands. It's actually back at Altel getting replaced. So we're gonna go ahead and unfold the props. And when you're wanting to launch the drone, you're gonna wanna unfold the props. So that's step number one. We'll put a little less stress on your motors. And we're gonna remove the gimbal guard. That's of course important so we don't mess up our gimbal. We're gonna make sure we have fully charged batteries. Right now this guy is not fully charged, it's dead. So I'm gonna swap this out with one that is fully charged. So we got this battery right here. And that's always a safe thing to do too when you're flying, especially in the beginning. Make sure you have a full battery because you don't wanna be in over your head having to get back with a critically low battery or a low battery when you don't really know what you're doing yet. So. Right now, we're just gonna go ahead and power on the drone. One long press, not like DJI, where you gotta do a short press and then a long press. We're gonna set this guy down. Ideally, you let the gimbal calibrate on a level surface, so there's that, so it's sitting on the ground level. We're gonna take out our remote, and just so you're aware, this little rig is Skyfire Aerial. It's a really great system. I'll put a link in the description, but to me, this standard remote with the Skyfire aerial rig really, really makes this a nice little professional package. You can set down the remote with no issue. It sits perfectly, and that's that. But we're gonna power on the remote. We're gonna make sure, of course, this is fully charged as well. When you're flying, you're gonna want the antennas bolt pointed in the downward direction like this. So that's gonna give you optimal range and optimal transmission when you're flying at normal situations. I think if you're wanting to go like super high, it's gonna basically be throwing out the signal this way. So you'd maybe put them in this direction, but regardless, I'm not positive about that. So just keep them down. That's gonna give you the best transmission, but you can play around with that, knowing that the drone will return to home if there is an issue or there is a disconnect. So we're gonna go ahead and get the iPhone so I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro Max. I got the Autel Explorer on the phone. So you're gonna need to download the Autel Explorer app, whether you're using iOS or Android. It's supported with both. I personally think Autel 
seems to play nicer with Android-based phones than it does with iOS. I think DJI seems to be better with iOS, so there is that. But we're gonna go ahead and get this guy connected. And then we have a USB-A to Lightning. We're gonna plug this guy in. I'll do a screen recording. I'm gonna make sure all my apps are closed, so I'm gonna force close everything so nothing is getting in the way. And then we'll just kind of walk through, not the entire app per se, but some of the things that I think are most important in changing right off the bat with the app. I'm gonna make sure this guy's recording. It is recording. I've done that before where I've actually kept on talking through an entire 20 minute video to realize I was not recording on my camera. That really sucks. So screen recording is gonna commence right now, boom. We're gonna go over to the Autel Explorer app. There we go, Autel Robotics. And then we're gonna go ahead and in the upper right hand corner, I logged into my account with Autel, so I'm good to go with that. And then I'm gonna go and depress the camera. And now it's saying remote control and mobile. Oh, I don't have the thing plugged into my lightning port, duh. That would help make sure everything is plugged in correctly. And there we go. We got a feed. Whoop. Kick me out. I'm going to go back in. And what I'm going to do is click out. We can go ahead and calibrate the compass. I'm not really concerned with it right now. But a good rule of thumb is to calibrate the compass and the IMU when you first get a drone because it's in transit and shipping. And it will just kind of take away some of the concerns if something were to happen. But right here you see I got this map. I'm gonna hit in the upper left hand corner of the map, that little circle, and that will minimize that. Oh, no, it maximized it. Where is it? I think if I touch that, right? No, you gotta really be gentle. There we go. I personally enjoy that view. So right now in the right, I'm sorry, so right now in the upper left, you're gonna see manual flight. So if we depress that manual flight, we got our different intelligent photo modes and flight modes. So personally, the only thing I mess with here is precision flight, which will give me the option to go very slow, but I'm not in the air, so I can't do that, or dual stability. So those are the only two things in this that I literally mess around with. So you guys are aware. We'll maybe get into one of those when we're flying, and let's get the guy in the air and we can at least be real life and flying. Pretty, pretty day out. We're gonna go ahead, for now I'm gonna, for now I'm gonna turn off obstacle avoidance in the upper right hand corner, you see that little green area? If I depress that, it's gonna disable obstacle avoidance and then I can go ahead and fly away from me and kind of get it in the air. And then when I get in the air, I'll enable it again, just so I have obstacle avoidance protection turned on in case I don't know exactly where I'm flying. But let's go ahead and look at some of the things. So again, we have manual flight. These are the little flight modes. I don't even go in here that often, but if we go to precision flight, for an example, we can go ahead and really dial down our max speed our vertical speed and our rotation speed. So you can see right now, this is how I'm yawing. Full stick to the right, full stick to the left. And I'll get into it later, but I'll show you why it's this speed. But if I go ahead and do two mile an hour and the rotation speed way down, this is full stick to the left, it's not even moving. So now I'm going full stick to the left at this little four degree kind of thing. And you can see, you can really dial in super slow movements with this feature. So just be aware of it, play around with it. And I think you'll kind of get some usage out of this precision flight. So I'm gonna get back out of there. Okay, get back in the manual flight. We have our battery level up on top, 30 minutes remaining. We got our distance, meaning our height. We're 55 feet up. We can go a little higher if we want. There we go. We got our other little distance, 66 feet away. 
we have our mile per hour, we have our little green area, which is our obstacle avoidance. We can depress that, it'll turn red. We're gonna hit okay. Now it's turned off. So this is kind of the nice way to fly if you know you're basically away from anything that you're gonna possibly hit. We'll turn it on for the moment, just because I'm doing a tutorial and I could be distracted. And then in the top upper right hand corner, we're gonna see our settings area. So right here, we have the settings area. So we have flight control, we have novice indoor mode. Basically some of the things I'm just gonna to touch over. I'm gonna turn novice mode off, so I'm gonna make sure that's off. I'm gonna keep indoor mode off. I'm gonna have my return to home altitude set to 200 feet, so I want it to be higher than most things at 200 feet. We're gonna have our speed mode, so standard and ludicrous, and the standard we can go ahead and depress the bottom we can actually switch it from standard 22 miles an hour to standard 11 miles an hour. Right now I have it in 22 miles an hour, but stay for example, we want to fly as slow as possible and not be in that precision mode for the intelligent flight mode kind of thing. We may want to go ahead and put it at 11 miles an hour. Ludicrous is going to be the faster of the modes, something like a sport mode with DGI. We have 34 miles an hour or 45. So if we're ever in sport mode, I personally always go ahead and hit 45 miles an hour because why not have the fastest possible speed if you're wanting to be in a true ludicrous mode. The altitude limit I have set to 2,000 feet, but I'm not going 2,000 feet, so don't worry about that. Maybe you set it to 1,000 feet just in case, but realistically you're legally only supposed to fly 400 feet unless you have your 107 and you know where your airspace is or what your airspace is and say you're flying over a structure or a building. The distance limit I have off. All of this you see I have off. This is where you calibrate your compass, your IMU, and then another important thing are these advanced settings. So in advanced settings, we have our front LED indicators I have on, the backward LED indicators off. We got our EXP settings and I have all of these set so you know the point two zero. I believe they come at like 0.45 or 0.50, but regardless, I put them at 0.20, so you see, which will give you, in my opinion, a little bit better way to fly cinematically. So play around with those as well, but 0.20 is what I have mine set to. And then we have sensitivity and the attitude I leave at 100%. You can play around with that as well. Sometimes I put it at like 70%. Break, I don't mess with ever and yaw movement, I have at 50%. So right now you can see 50% is my yaw. This is kind of like slowly on the left stick, a little bit more full left stick. So it's going over that curve essentially, which you saw. So let's go back down over there. I wish you didn't have to click all the way back in. I wish it just left you at the menu where you're currently at, but it doesn't. So let's go ahead and do the sensitivity to 100 and see what happens. I don't notice a huge difference, honestly. Maybe a little bit. Well, I guess it is. Look at how much quicker that is. So this is 100% full stick right, full stick left. Let's go ahead and try that again at the 50%. So sensitivity, 50%, oh, come on, 50%, hit done, X out of there. And now we have full stick right, full stick left. So it just takes the edge off of it a teeny bit. But again, you can play around with those and see what you personally gravitate with. But that's what I have mine set with, so you know, again, EXP setting, 0 0.20, sensitivity, 100, 150. So that's that. We're going to go down to visual navigation. This is where you could also turn off visual obstacle avoidance. So you can depress this, turn it off, turn it back on. You can go and be a little bit more selective with what you want. This is where you could also have your auxiliary bottom light on auto on on if you're flying at night i personally like it to have it flashing every two seconds so that's something you want to be aware of that's a really handy and helpful thing if you're flying in low light or at night or maybe early morning 
This I don't mess with either. Remote control, this is where you can calibrate your remote. This is where you can do your little command stick as mode two, which most people will fly with. This is where you can do your little remote control matching, which I don't even know a lot about, honestly. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and do the customized buttons. And I have my B button set to the gimbal going up and down 90 degrees. And I'm not sure, this is a bug in this app. Every time I select down, if, if you scroll down, you can see there's a speed mode. So right now, in theory, if I hit the A button, it will switch out of standard to ludicrous and vice versa. But for some reason, this always defaults to undefined, which is kind of frustrating. So I'll tell, maybe you wanna address that in your next update. So that's what I have mine set to for the A and B buttons. And the Skyfire Aerial has this little bumper guard, because a lot of times without this little bumper guard from Skyfire Aerial attached to your remote, you'll accidentally depress the A and B buttons and that can get really frustrating. So that may be a situation that you'd want them undefined so you don't actually get into a situation. I'm gonna make sure my drone is still in the air. Okay, there we go. And then we have image transmission, I don't touch. So then we can go to aircraft battery and you can see our voltage, the temperature of the battery, the discharge times, critically low battery, I'm gonna have it set to 8% because it will wanna force land on you when you're at critically low. And I don't want this thing to try to land until the last very moment. So keep that at 8%, that would be my suggestion. And then maybe keep your low battery set to something a little bit more conservative, like 25%, so you could start paying attention and being mindful that your battery is low, maybe start to kind of get back home. And that's that. Time to discharge. Personally, I leave it at 10 days. So I'm gonna switch that to 10 days. And battery details, it's just gonna give you the serial number. Gimbal, this is gonna be where you can actually calibrate your gimbal. And most importantly, your gimbal pitch EXP sensitivity. So this I keep at four, and you can see right now, this is full little dial down and up. So if I wanna go and get some footage, for example, let me go and try to cruise around a little bit. I'm at 146 feet, so I should be fine. So let me go ahead and try to get a little teeny movement. If I roll the camera up, Come on. Oh. Yeah, it's not really that responsive. There we go. But you may want to play around with that. That just totally sucks. So I have to probably dial that in a little bit. So let me see if it's set a little higher, if it will be more responsive. So seven, let me try that same move. Once it beeps, that means it took the setting. So I'm gonna go this way, try to do a little teeny orbit. Come on. Okay, so now it's actually kind of too sensitive. I don't know, it's hard. You gotta dial this thing in. It doesn't necessarily happen overnight. You gotta fly it a bunch and just learn, is the gimbal being too sensitive? Is it being too slow so is the gimbal being too fast is it being too slow we're gonna go ahead and keep it at like let's see two just for kicks okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the right go to the left and I'm gonna roll the gimbal yeah I'm not used to flying this drone So it still feels almost too fast, which is kind of odd. But play around with that. Just know that's an important area. I'm gonna keep the gimbal pitch set higher so I can go up a little bit more towards the horizon. And what else is there? Live, I'm not messing with. Security, I don't even know. I don't mess with that. And then general is gonna give you the area where you can set your units, meaning Imperial for miles per hour, which is what I'm gonna have mine set to. The home point, you can have it set to me, the aircraft, or customize it. Show aircraft coordinates, I'm gonna have none. Voiceovers I personally don't like, so this is where you can actually turn them on and off, which is great. Obstacle avoidance notification sound, I keep that on just because, but you can disable that as well. 
you can select your language or you can go to about and then you can see your firmware versions so this is going to show you basically everything firmware wise on your drone meaning the remote well i don't know why it failed try one more time there we go so we got our flight control a camera remote control the batteries blah 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 so this is what you're going to want to check to make certain everything updated correctly but realistically these are some of the main things in the settings area another thing too is going to be down here we're going to go into say right now we're in video mode i'm going to click that little arrow which brings up this little screen so in the bottom right hand corner this little arrow if i tap it is going to show me all my camera settings so right now we have basically i shoot 6k normal if you want to get 10-bit color you're going to want to shoot 4k and then you're going to want to shoot i believe i would be shooting 24 frames per second and you're going to want to shoot color do 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 log so this will give you 10-bit color just so you guys are aware if you're wanting to shoot 10-bit these are going to be the settings i would go to but for me i personally think what i get the best result without even messing around with that is 6k which is 8-bit but it still does a really great job at color grading i'm going to keep it at 24 frames per second for a little bit more cinematic look i'm going to keep my format at an mp4 exposure i'm going to put a manual of course then we can go ahead and stop down our aperture i'm going to go to f11 and we can adjust the exposure here right now realistically we should be at a 50th of a second but i don't have any filters on this guy so I'm going to go to maybe 1 20th of a second and kind of get in the ballpark. And so you know as well, in the bottom right-hand corner, you see this little camera icon. If we touch that, this is where we get our grid lines. So I have the grids set the grid plus line. And then I have the center point set to cross, which is great for doing an orbit. You kind of can really hone in like a target. So you can see that. We have the histogram enabled which is great so this is where we turn it on we could actually drag it with our finger Oop. i don't know if we can with the screen open defog i don't really mess with but it's kind of like a dehaze built in so we're going to turn that off you can play around with that sometimes that actually isn't bad and then this is where we can go and save our location to our sd card our flash card blah 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 and I flicker, I have the video encoding format at H.265, and I believe for 10-bit, you need to be at 265 as well. I'm not positive about that. You guys can let me know in the comments below. But these are my settings here. Basically, the only thing I have really mindful of are my grid lines, my center point, and my histogram. And then over here, we can go ahead and select our white balance. Ideally, we're not in an auto white balance, so we don't get any kind of fluctuation. So I'm gonna put it at sunny for now digital zoom i really don't mess with autofocus we can go to manual or autofocus here color i'm going to keep it at none style i don't mess with and really that's about it so it's kind of pretty simple we can go and hit that little bottom arrow to hide this now and there we go we can fly a little bit and kind of see not really about flying let me see and one of the good things with Autel is we don't have geofencing. So as you know, geofencing will stop us from going a certain height, a certain area. Not that we should be flying illegally or we should be flying in zones that aren't good to fly, meaning restricted airspace. But it's nice to know we don't get locked down by DJI. And that's kind of a cool thing and a big pro for Autel drones. Um... So where am I? Let me go back to where I'm at. Yeah, so I'm somewhere right down here. So maybe we can try to fly around here. So let's try to do a little orbit. So I gotta play around with my settings as well. So there we go, we got a nice orbit. I'll try to roll my gimbal now a little bit and get the camera to go up. And right now, as I'm doing this, I'm paying attention to if it feels good or not. Meaning, is the gimbal and the camera raising up at a speed I like? If it's not, I'm going to determine 
if it's too fast or too slow and kind of dial in my settings that way. So like that's not too bad, for example. There we go. I don't even think I have a memory card in here. My memory card is showing full. So regardless, it isn't about that. We can move our histogram around. We can tap out of that and close it. We can go back to the bottom right corner, hit that little guy again, bring up the menu, hit that little camera icon and go and enable the histogram one more time. Click out of there and then move it around where we want. So I'm hoping this helps, guys. This kind of gives you a little running start, I hope, on utilizing the Autel Explorer app and flying an Autel drone. Of course, if you have a Nano or a Light Series drone, it's going to be different because you're going to be utilizing the Sky app. But if you're using the Autel Explorer app, especially if you're a photographer or videographer or wanting to do more cinematic kind of stuff, I think this is a good start to get you in the right position. And then you just kind of fine tune as you go and hone your settings. So if this helped, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and aloha, guys. And yeah, until next time, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see a video on, whether it's an Autel, a Light Plus drone, a Sky app, an Explorer app, I don't know, whatever. Just let me know what you want to see more videos of and more content, and I'll try to get that out to you. So thanks, guys.